Well, we can speak to Robert Kelly, who is in South Korea. Robert is a professor in the Department of Political Science and Diplomacy at Busan National University. Uh, Robert, thank you so much for your time. Those grim statistics paint their own picture. Tell us more about North Korea's situation in terms of its humanitarian situation. Yeah, actually, I thought that was an excellent summary. Um, North Korea has been near or in dire food security for many decades now. Um, in the, uh, during the Cold War, the Soviet Union and China, Soviet Union more than China, supported North Korea here and there um, with subsidized fuel and things like that, and that helped North Korea sort of reap larger harvests and stuff like that. But all of that aid was sort of cut off in the 1990s, and North Korea has really spiraled very badly. The military plays a very large role in North Korean politics, and Alphen acts as sort of like a vampire or a parasite on the national budget, sucking out enormous amounts of resources. And so North Korea is always sort of in chronic food insecurity, right? Um, you hear from like NGO groups and stuff that North Koreans are re regularly below the World Health Organization's um, proposed uh, caloric intake per day. I think it's like 1,800, and Korean North Koreans eat like 1,400 or something. Um, so it's it's a constant problem. And as you said, North Korea is very corrupt and it's very inefficient. So the problem isn't really getting better. North Korea is constantly dependent on external help. You know that famous picture of nighttime taken from a satellite which right. shows the Korean peninsula and see North Korea practically pretty much in the dark. We know that the country doesn't right. have enough electricity supply to allow all right. towns and cities to have light all the time. So they ration it. What's right. the difference between life in Pyongyang in terms of food security and those who live in rural areas? Yeah, it's pretty severe. I mean, I've been to North Korea, and if you go to Pyongyang, it's a reasonably normal sort of, I don't know, sort of second world kind of city. Um, it's not, you know, it's not Seoul, right? But it's it's pretty good. I mean, there's buses and there's subways and refrigerators, you know, operate in their restaurants and bowling alleys and things like that. Um, once you leave, though, it really does, infrastructurally, it really just falls off a cliff, particularly as you get into northern North Korea up near China. Then That's where things get really bad, and it was in those areas where the famine was... Um, the worst. There's a big famine in North Korea in the late 1990s. Um, the rural countryside sort of has a very sort of subservient relationship with the capital. It's almost sort of like an imperial structure, right, where the capital sort of bleeds resources out of the periphery into itself. Um, and North Koreans have responded by sort of fleeing across the border into China and building black market networks and sort of trying to grow their own food. And then they get caught and they get in trouble and things like that. But yeah, rural North Korea is quite backward. Politically, is Kim Jong-un at all reluctant to accept external humanitarian assistance? Also, how much does he keep the rest of the country in the dark about the food security situation as it is now? Yeah, to the, to the, for, to the second question, um, I think the word is sort of out. Um, in the late 1990s, the information cordon around North Korea really kind of collapsed because of the famine. And North Koreans were just so desperate and people were literally falling over dead in the street from starvation. Um, the people began to flee into China and a lot of information came in and people began to be aware of it. Um, I think of the other question, sort of the, so on that question, I think sort of they're aware. North Koreans, yes, they are aware that they're, that they're living on the edge. Um, on the other question, though, about the recipient, do they, do they take food aid? Um, the problem here is that they don't like that food aid comes with strings because we used to give the North Koreans, we would just give them aid. The problem is that the army would take it and then they would sort of resell it or they would just keep it for themselves and it wouldn't get to the ground, particularly the rural areas you mentioned before. And so now we try to make sure that there are like NGO inspectors or something that get in and watch the distribution of the aid. The North Koreans don't like that, so then they reject the aid. Sometimes they reject the aid for political reasons because they don't want to see, be seen as receiving something as a gift from South Korea or the United States. Like they just rejected South Korean food aid this year. Um, yeah, they're just not an easy partner in this question. And how much pressure does this put on Kim Jong-un and the political elite to do a deal with Donald Trump so that sanctions will be lifted? That's been one of the main sticking points throughout the course of these negotiations between Washington and Pyongyang. Pyongyang, apparently, according to the Americans, saying before any deal is done, you have to lift all sanctions. That's right. Um, th yeah, that's true. That's what the North Koreans want more than anything else, the sanctions relief to start. Um, but honestly, no, to be to be very callous and hard about it, I think the North Korean elite just doesn't actually care that much about rural poverty and malnutrition in North Korea. Um, like I said, they were willing to endure a famine in the late 1990s that killed 10 percent of the population, and the elite just let it happen. They they refused food aid because it came with political strings, and they, they just carried the losses of, of their own population. The elite in North Korea is really grotesque and brutal, to be perfectly honest. Um, and no, I don't think there's much pressure. I'm um, certain that humanitarian or moral, ethical or political pressure like that 
The only possible pressure would be if things got so bad at the bottom that you had an Arab Spring style revolt, you know, something something really sort of furious rising up from the bottom. But that's never happened in North Korea. So um, unless you have really, really extreme starvation, no, I don't think the regime actually cares. Robert, it's always so interesting to hear your analyses. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank Robert you. Kelly speaking to us from Busan.